They're just choosing their spots. So I think this is... Sing Sorry, go ahead. Oh, just a single planet system. Go ahead. But I was just going to uh, just sort of do a brief overview of the, the players and what, what you thought about uh, their strengths and weaknesses, perhaps, especially Andreas and Headcrab after watching them uh, face each other in the uh, qualifying tournament. Yeah, you know, those guys were both really good, and I think they, they handled uh, themselves. They made excellent use of Tier 2 as well. So now the players have spawned, and... All apart, no commanders together, great map control potential, therefore, and expansions as well. Oh, game paused. So Andreas has called for his rehost. Side, there's actually most of the planet is bare with just a clump of it right in the middle. And, you know, the result of that kind of one face being kind of blank is that you might expect that the. Uh, that the players will start relatively close to each other. Uh, because you know, normally you can expect that on the average they will start uh, kind of halfway around the planet. If you choose a sp specific location, then there's only one point on the planet that's the exact opposite location. But at the, you know, if relative to you, the halfway rare point has the most, has a whole full ring of locations. So that is the most likely outcome. And this makes it so that it's even more likely to be close. Once again, all players apart. Really good start there for... All I feel, just having a eyeballing them, blue potentially better for mechs. I mean, at least immediately straight off, because both of those spawns have really good proximal expansions. Uh, orange, however, are going to have to work for theirs a little bit. I feel like it's good in, you know, a little bit good for blue in the sense that Expanding towards each other to get the metal extraction points in between is very natural and joins their bases. However, Orange has the ability to kind of build away from the enemy. And, uh, yeah, he's pointing out that hole in the world. Super um, epic triangle. <laughs> yep. Don't uh... fall in the hole. Oops, wrong hole. Hole <laughs> in the world. Uh, uh, yeah, so they, they, they can, Orange can expand away from the enemy, which is often very useful because you can build up some initial static defenses and then play Tug of War, and that's it. Like, you just kind of expand away, and it happens very naturally. Yep. So Blue already getting off a skitter on the other side, having a look at their builds now. So both Blue players have gone for vehicles first, not yet queued up their second factory. Either of them, Orange uh, gone vehicle and air first. Getting out lots of scouts. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what I think about uh, Fireflies and Skitters. I guess Skitters can sort of sit by expansions, whereas Fireflies is a really fast, find your opponent sort of scout. Um, but, yeah, a uh, lot of Skitters coming out for Orange. Um, you know, I feel like. What's that ping? Blue I feel, pinging I one feel of like there's a, there's a certain amount of. There's a lot of scouts going out. I'm kind of surprised they spent so much on that. And I feel like it's. You know, it's good to have a mix of units. So the, the air start, the air vehicle start versus the pure vehicle start. Now, uh, Blue has gone ahead and made an air factory anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, they are out there with those. Bumblebee is coming out as well from Blue, so we're going to see some uh, hopefully worker raiding. Uh, I think Andrus might still be having his issue, however, his rehost has been called. Fortunately, his partner Headcrab can cover for him to a certain degree. Uh, a raid here by that uh, bomber has gone over the base of Headcrab and Andreas here, their eastern base, if you will. I think it, it took out a fabricator. Fabricator. Yeah. yeah, it did. It was the one that was building that P-Gen. So going to delay that uh, economic build just a little bit. The other blue player now getting out his uh, air factory as well. So they're going to have two vehicles, two air. Uh, and queuing up three vehicles in their other spawn now as well. Orange getting a ping off there just to say, Oi, look over here. There's, there's something important going on. And indeed, he gets the scout on that extra vehicle factory. So he's going to have a reasonable idea that they're going to go for vehicles predominantly. Did he get a, I see a couple uh, burn marks by Orange over that base where they just pinged. I think he got a couple fabricators in that uh, pass with that bomber. 
One possible, yes. Uh, I think it might have taken the ones out that were queued up to queue, uh, expand to all those mechs that are right in the middle of his base, which is a really good win for him at this point in the game. Yep. Although it is team armies, but uh, again, it's still all, all equates and all is relative. Another Bumblebee now going over to the other blue player, so we'll see how much damage that one does. I don't think it'll do all that much. Is Willie get off a fab kill? Yes, he will. He gets shot down immediately afterwards. But the commander going to have to be diverted off the PGENs, perhaps, to uh, just get that vehicle factory up before it starts delaying, not delaying, decaying. Yep. Uh, that's, that's the right word I was looking for. <laughs> He does not divert, and so maybe that will be allowed to decay. Um, looking at the economy tab here, we can see 124 metal per second for blue versus 110. Um, really, you know, they just both jump up another notch, and it's actually quite close uh, economically. Yeah, he does. He does divert and get that factory up as well, and his commander ends up. Uh... Nope, not getting stuck between the PGENs. It looked as though he might have done briefly there, but he's actually assisting out that factory, interestingly, which is curious rather than getting out uh, some more energy. But he needs more fabricators after some successful bomber harass by Orange, I feel. Yeah. So if we look at the fabricator count, it's uh, 13 to 10 in favor of the Orange team. So yes, he does need to get those fabricators out, but uh, the blue team does have more actual units, 46 to Blue now setting up a radar between uh, one of their players' bases and Orange, just about to get complete. However, Orange are also sending out a couple of fabricators there to get up a whole bunch of proxy vehicle bases and then scout to the mechs as well. However, that radar will just about be able to see those going up, all of those uh, points there. So he's going to be able to realize, ah, something's going on over here, I don't want it and uh, put up a, a laser turret and in fact sees those points and sees that they're actually uh, the vehicle ant. Yeah, there's uh, everybody's putting up streams of uh, or lines of factories between their bases. Uh, there's another row of them over here that the orange commander on the east is creating. There's another row that the blue uh, team has made towards the equator of the planet as well. Uh, only one fabricator working on that so it will take some time to get those out but he's just kind of Staging them up to make it happen, and uh, yep. there's some kind of maneuvering and tug of war going on here. Yeah, definitely. It looks as though uh, Orange is probably going to be able to fight back here a little bit. He wants to. Uh, Blue wants to defend that fabricator if um, that staging post is his plan, which, well, obviously it is. But um, you know what I mean. Um, but he's, he's yep. retreating his units there, probably to blob them up just a little bit more and to act as a meat shield. But uh, more vehicle factories queued up over the side as well. Blue pinging an orange force there, just seeing that they're they're on their way. And a few uh, few vehicles um, coming in from from an unexpected angle to this orange base. Perhaps well, they're definitely going to get off uh, a kill on that mech and possibly do a bit more damage to the base as well. Yeah, quite a different point of conflict over here. Blue's done a really good job of harassing the western kind of expansion uh, between their bases of the orange players uh, but he is about to get outnumbered here by just one one additional tank but that'll be plenty of them and now you can see oranges like stream of uh, proxy tanks coming out all the time quite a bit more if we look over at the army tab we can see that the factory count for orange is actually only one factory ahead right now so pretty close uh, pretty close on fabbers but actually quite a bit ahead on terms of mobile army count for Blue. Yeah, and Blue has now actually managed to, using that sort of side door there, take out a Mex and a P-Gen. Though getting fought off now, doing a little bit of extra damage to uh, a second P-Gen, but not doing any more damage than that. Um, so Orange be able to sweep that up really nicely as well. And we'll pr Blue will probably respond to this with a more concerted effort to get their factories up on that on that front. And in fact, they've got a massive blob just sort of skirting around... Um, towards the south of where that orange commander is. Perhaps an attempt uh, at encirclement, but... Uh... Yeah, he may just be heading over there to... Uh, actually, if you look over in those metal uh, points ah, to yes. the west, you can see just mm. the tiny uh, targets that show where he's sending those units. And, uh, you know, he's going to try to take out a big chunk of income there. And I think he's going to be quite successful at doing so. Yeah, there's nothing that Orange can really do to uh, to counter this at this point. Though they do have the odd Bumblebee, 
but uh, Blue do have that hummingbird there. So as long as Orange send over the Bumblebee with uh, a little bit of support to take out that hummingbird first, which uh, they might just about, well, they, they do see because it's hovering over the mechs. I keep forgetting that mechs have their own vision, but um, yeah, all of those mechs go down, which is really good good success for Blue here. Seven yeah. mechs. That's... Seven mechs, and yet Headcrab and Andreas are still ahead. The other thing is that there's a advanced factory that's almost done, advanced vehicle factory almost done in the blue base uh, on the equator. And looking around, I'm not seeing one for the orange team. No, there so, is not. But there are significant numbers of factories, uh, although still less than uh, the blue at the moment. Well, they've just equalized, so it's 25 factories apiece, which is really quite staggering given the number of units on the field. You wouldn't really believe it, would you? Uh, yeah, kind of an amazing number of factories actually out there. Uh, but they all are building lines of factories. Actually, one of those factories goes down for blue on the equator between their bases. He's actually starting to lose this tug of war here a little bit. Brings in some units from the side. I think that will clean that up and save his remaining factories. You know, it's, uh, but he does have an Inferno in there and does take out quite a few of those units just from that. Yeah, Orange don't want to move their commander in just too far. Though they could probably do a bit of damage here with him. But again, with all the uh, building health buff that was in the last patch, it's slightly more difficult to actually uh, do significant damage with, with your commander in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Now looking across, uh, there's some bomb bots streaming across from blue. Could they hit this massive pack of fabricators? It looks as though they might do it. In fact, they're targeted there. Yeah, that would That's be fantastic gonna be a for lot. them. Oh my goodness, yeah, oh my all God, down. All those fabricators. Wowza. And meanwhile, the Aventales are already in that base taking out power gens. This is actually a pretty big hit for them. Now, yeah. they have, and meanwhile, that's actually, the blue team also has the advanced uh, factory. So that's another opportunity for them to uh, get ahead both economically. Meanwhile, at the North Pole, you know, there's this huge field of wreckage between the two players. Uh, they've, you know, actually made pretty good traction pushing towards the base of of uh, blue with orange but I feel like blue has done a really good job of kind of sneaking units in a set of units into the key locations so uh, really pushing back and forth here quite a bit and, Ama uh, amazingly uh, orange with those air units in that base they still have not got the scout on that t2 vehicle factory crucially I feel because they do not know that it's up there, so they do not know that they need to respond to that. And given that it is there, and the possibilities of vanguards and shellers and levelers, they're going to need to want to get up some advanced of their own, be it air or vehicles. Yeah, they, uh, you know, that is an opportunity for them to kind of really push ahead. It's not, you know, if you've got a ton of ants, I'm sorry, aventails, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's very, uh, you can actually take out those tier... Uh, advanced units, and but um, they can If they get into your base, they they can really do a lot of damage because they just hit a lot harder. You know, sometimes that hitting harder is not uh, as effective because they they might hit uh, harder less frequently. But if if they hit individual units and then just take them out one by one anyway, it's not that big a deal. A huge set of bombers coming in from blue over the base of orange there, taking yeah. out that army. They just uh, did a lot of base actually, defense as well, and that's going to give them the hole they need to get those vehicles of their own in there and do some more damage. So really not enough AA from Orange. Yeah. Definitely not enough. You could probably control click all of those vehicle factories uh, a while ago, but the, the window has passed now. The Bumblebees know that uh, they've outstayed their welcome before they take any losses and get the heck out of there. Commander yeah, being and they move over to, move to the in. other army and just clean it right up. Whoops. I feel like blue is starting to move ahead. Another set of bomb bots moving their way into the uh, base. They actually heading towards the commander. Don't know if they're going to get there. Running past the other units. That was not a great move. Uh, only one of them, I think, got to the commander. I feel like they mm. could have done a much better job just taking out those uh, that army and then letting the remaining tanks they had in there. In fact, all of the uh, bumblebees just got killed over in Orange's base by a single hummingbird. They were just left there idle and uh, they were all cleaned up. Uh, however, yeah. Orange now getting up a T2 vehicle factory. About time. Yeah, a little bit of a misstep there, getting those, letting those bumblebees, uh, uh, basic bombers, uh, go down. 
And now he's got a couple of the advanced fabbers out. I see I see only one actually. Um, but he's starting to get the advanced metal extractors out and that can really help pitch their economy forward uh, without having to take any more additional territory. Uh, but then the shellers are working their way out too, so that is a big opportunity for them. There, there is a second one. It's heading to the other base. It's in the middle of no man's land at this point. Oh, I see it. Um, looking around the back of Blue's base, actually, just to their expansion, there's a single tank there that's taken out three mechs, putting in putting in his uh, his money's worth there. Uh, however, the other expansion from Blue is defended by four vehicle factories. Um, so good work there, but I feel as though Orange could po possibly be expanding a little bit more, though they do have that rear uh, vehicle factory line queued up as well really nicely. Yeah, a couple tanks of Orange are actually in the base of Blue on the North Pole. Picks off a fabricator, a very useful thing to do there, and just putting in some Rasta. Not going to probably get any more buildings down, uh, and he stops just a little bit too long. He needs to keep moving. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get anything. He might. Actually, there is a metal extractor back there that is almost dead. He can just target that. See how it does. Yeah, I think... I'm just really curious that he's just sort of sat there. Oh, he's, he's gone. Yeah, now he's out. I'm just looking at the factory tab again. Orange really pulling away now. 46 to 35. And the metal count for the army is still relatively even. However... There is a large number of units plus a vanguard or two heading directly for Orange's commander. So Orange is going to be able to try and defend this as best they can. Though they're going to see that vanguard and they're going to want to get their commander away from there. Vanguard really too close there. Taking out a huge gun with the commander's HP and this commander is toast. Wow, okay. I was actually looking at a different vanguard. So I'm just going to step back in time here for just a moment. So that our viewers can see that. There's the vanguard here at the front. And he's making uh, some big moves here. Shoots uh, that one unit. But the splash damage gets the commander, and then finally does take him out. So that was uh, what Marshall was just referring to. And then the Vanguard moving his way into the base as well. He's got uh, quite a few units to surround him, but he's got a good buffer of other units. And this is big trouble for Orange. Yeah, especially now that they're a commander down, their uh, buildability is, is definitely reduced. And that, that base there is now predominantly air factories since uh, their economy is down the pan at the moment, 37% efficiency or thereabouts, so uh, they're not going to be producing too much defense from within that base to be able to respond quickly. They're having to divert units away from their other base to uh, to try and defend against that. Meanwhile, Blue is just continuing to stream with the tug of war regardless of where Orange's units are going, so dividing mm -hmm. and conquering. Yep. And the Vanguard has moved in and just completely destroyed a whole line of those power generators and uh, now working on the second line of them. So he has really done a lot of damage. Even that one Vanguard has done a ton of damage, and there's another one in here helping take out these factories. I think this is kind of the tipping point. Orange making a desperation move with his tanks to come in between the two bases, but I think uh, those are seen by the blue team. Uh, well, they're actually not seen because they're both out of power. Um, but he knows they're there. Uh, there's the radar. And... He's moving to try to stop him. You know, he's you know, blue may lose a few uh, metal extractors, but orange has lost a metal extractor and an entire base here. Yeah, I mean, blue's commander is definitely entrenched within their their base, and lots of bomb bots trying to desperately def defend. Only, uh, I think, no, none of them hit their mark actually, but. Uh, Blue is going to be able to rally units to, to, to re respond to this threat, but the commander is on the other side of the base, so those those vehicles aren't going to get very far at all, unfortunately. And I think once that uh, once that clump is gone, I think Orange might realise that uh, they're definitely not in the favourable position as their original base is no more. Yeah, it is out of there. So at 470 uh, to 3... 18, the blue team has about 50% more metal generation per second. Very similar amounts of actual energy production, though the uh, the orange team's working very hard on the uh, advanced power generation, but they're losing their kind of row of factories here, and once their production goes down, it's going to be hard to respond. They do have quite a few shellers here working on the line of blue, though. 
Yeah, the last orange commander as well sort of sat out there in the open, sort of in the middle of the oranges no man's land that sort of claimed sort of within all of their expansions, but uh, Blue are going to be able to work to that really quite easily once they start to pick off these factories that, as you say, they've really started to do. A group of vehicles there sort of sat in the middle and using a really open side door, just sort of saying, you know, you know that passage to your other base? Yeah, we just sort of use that, don't mind us. And uh, sort yep, of rolling in there with the vanguards. Trudging in, two vanguards at the lead there. Uh, no anti-air, interestingly enough, but I think it's coming in now with some, in the form of some fighters. I think Orange has uh, rallied their vehicle fabricators and might be setting up some uh, three-point laser turrets. I like to call them T3 just for, for use of quickness. Um, mm -hmm. um, but they're definitely moving them away. They know that they need to get uh, save the uh, build power there. If all of those fa fabricators left, uh, died rather, I think uh, it definitely would have been a lost cause, although instead they're going for power, regardless of the fact that they're floating at this point. Uh, yeah, uh, well they don't really know that. And a teleporter finished for the blue team, so they're just going to try to uh, truck their uh, vehicles over there quite a bit faster just by using that teleporter, uh, so there's not quite as much delay. They do finally get cleaned up, those vanguards are dead. But meanwhile, another giant blob of units down here by the south pole. Um, kind of working their way around. Everything's getting destroyed now by blue. They've got like many fronts working. Yeah, they've definitely and even the orange sort of staging post back there, all of those factories, as you say, sort of beginning to fall and all of their undefended expansions will follow. Uh, it's only a matter of time before that teleporter really starts to put in its money's worth as more vanguards start to stream out, supported by shellers and uh, tanks, and even a couple of bombots in the mix as well. Curiously enough, but uh, you know, bombots are awesome. <laughs> indeed, uh, and now putting in some AA static there as well to defend the teleporter from bumblebee raids. But uh, at this point, I don't think Orange is, is in a position to worry too much about the scouting of that, though they will start to wonder where all these units are coming from uh, in that massive sort of fog of war area, but I don't think they have anything that they can really do about it at this point. Yeah, there's not much to do. Uh, they do think? ping, they see the bomb bots. Bomb bots now, they do 250 damage when they explode, and with the additional health of the buildings, I feel like they're much stronger against units than buildings. Is it going to be dangerous? Because that Vanguard there on the... Uh, uh, PGen line that the commander is at the other end of, and the vanguard, of course, is going to follow that PGen line. I suspect. Rather, instead, he's gone the other uh, way. Never mind. Heading back in. Yep. The bombots, however, go in and take out one PGen for about what, fifteen bombots or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the rest of that base is going to be total. We'll probably see the the GGs called shortly. I reckon. Though Orange is still okay for power. They're they're not so okay for metal, but uh, they're okay yeah. for power. So uh, yeah, blue definitely have the superior build power, and the factory count is actually the balance has tipped in the other way. Forty-four for blue, twenty-six for orange. So uh, it's it's definitely a losing battle. Yep. So as we uh, look at the final stretch, as uh, blue continues to clean up, I don't really think there's even a sniping already. Oh, they're actually circling in on the commander. Bond bots streaming in actually gets take a bunch of them taken out there. You can see them coming in there, uh, not quite hitting the commander, but the shellers are there, the bombers are there, the aventels are there. Everybody's there. It's just a party on this commander, and there is the end of the orange team. Yeah, yep. very good game. So Milk Dragon and Naganax defeat Headcrab and Andreas, though they are not eliminated. This isn't an elimination tournament. This is uh, about the points, and the teams will now be somewhat scrambled, I believe, into 3v3 for the next round. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. Um, and what's going to happen is that, you know, the teams that were together this round are actually going to split up. Yeah, and in so, fact, I think they might be, uh, the members will be turning on each other in the following round as well. Yes. Um, so that is uh, pretty interesting there. Uh, so we'll see uh, Burnt Custard face off against the Lodia again as he did last round, but with the help of Obsidian and Tard. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, I guess these numbers in the, in the, uh, green and red the score on the uh, spreadsheet indicate the total number of points because we can